Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I am going to talk about the adenovirus vector vaccine technology. If you are new to the channel, I'm Dr. Han. It's lovely to have you here. In this channel, you will find science review content, update on the latest global health topic. I also like to share learning tips and tricks for students' academic and personal development. If these are your interested topic, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you have already subscribed, thank you very much for coming back. So on September 23rd, a new vaccine has just entered phase 3 study here in the US. Let's find out what this vaccine is and how it compared to other vaccines that are already in phase 3 trials. Hi guys, like in the intro video, we're going to talk about the adenovirus vector vaccine technology today. So first, a disclaimer, this video is my summary and interpretations of properly available scientific information. This video does not serve as any advice on treatment, preventions, and diagnosis of any diseases. And all those companies that I mentioned in the video, I have no affiliation with them. First, a little bit of the background story. We have a vaccine that originated in Europe that is from AstraZeneca and Oxford that is called AZD1222, which utilize a different technology than the one that we have here in the US from Pfizer and Moderna. Now, there is a new player now just entered the phase three game. This vaccine is by Janssen's, a pharmaceutical company of Johnson & Johnson. The similarity between the AstraZeneca vaccines and the Janssen's vaccine is that they both use adenovirus vector as a vehicle to deliver their vaccine material. So in this video, let's find out what is adenovirus and second, what is a vector and how they compare to mRNA vaccines in a nutshell. So what is adenovirus? Adenovirus actually is a group of double-stranded DNA virus. So uh, they are very different than the coronavirus. They are RNA viruses. Now these adenoviruses can commonly cause fever, cough, sore throat, and other upper respiratory infections that we see in almost everyday basis. Now there are actually many serotypes or strings of adenoviruses. So actually they give them a different number that is representing different strings. So what is a vector? A vector basically is a infertile virus. You can think of it like that. Okay, basically they lack the gene to replicate themselves and act as a vehicle to transport other material and subsequently to stimulate immune response against that things that got transported inside of them. Here in our case of COVID-19 vaccines, first we have our SARS-CoV-2 virus. Now, we took out the genetic material that can code for the spike protein and put it into the adenovirus and use this as a vehicle to deliver the spike protein uh, genetic material into our cell to induce immune response against SARS-CoV-2 virus. So what is the history of this AD vector vaccines? Now currently there is one, okay, just one uh, AD vector vaccines that has been approved by the European Medicines Agency. This vaccine is authorized to prevent Ebola disease. And this vaccine use the same technology, the AD26 vector that is by the same company, Janssen. Now let's look at the differences between AD vector vaccines and mRNA vaccines in terms of eliciting the immune response. So AD vector vaccines first will have to activate a branch of immune systems called innate immune system in our body. So these are the first line of defense in our body. 
and through this innate immune system, it will stimulate a process called antigen presenting and cross over to the adaptive immune system and eventually induce antibody productions and cell mediated immunity against the viral component that is being delivered by this AD vector vaccines. In terms of mRNA vaccines, so this vaccine is using fatty nanoparticles called liposome to deliver the viral genetic materials into different cells and also go through antigen presenting process and go, went into adaptive immunity. The end result is similar, if not the same, is to induce antibody and cell mediated immunity. So the key differences between AD vector vaccines and mRNA vaccines is at the beginning process. Here we utilize the innate immune system and cross over to the adaptive. On the other hand, mRNA vaccines skip that process. Now to learn more about mRNA vaccines, I have a link up there in the corner. You can check out the basics, five facts about mRNA vaccines. So what are the potential limitations of AD vector? First of all, the choice of AD vectors is crucial because it is a virus that naturally exists in the world that commonly infects our upper respiratory tract. So we sometimes have immunity against adenovirus already. For example, in China, the company called CanSino, they are developing a similar vaccine using a AD5 vector. However, many people have already have the immunity against AD5. So what it means that it can actually make the vaccine a little bit less effective as they, they hope for. Now, on the other hand, Janssen uses a virus subtype called AD26. This is a relatively rare adenovirus subtype, and it hasn't been around or infected as many people naturally in the world. So even though there are some reported immunity of AD26, the cases are a lot less compared to AD5. So let's look at the differences between AstraZeneca and Janssen vaccines. First of all, they both use adenovirus factor. That is a common technology ground. However, AstraZeneca use a chimpanzee adenovirus versus Janssen's use human adenovirus AD26. Now on the AstraZeneca size, because it is from chimpanzee, so there's actually very low cross reactive immunity in humans. It's about 1% based on their findings. On the other hand, for the Janssen branch, depending on the locations, in Europe and US, there's about 10 to 20% of reported immunity in the populations. However, in sub-Saharan Africa, there's up to 90% of natural immunity against AD26. So the take-home message is that AD vector is based on using adenovirus shell to deliver SARS-CoV-2 genetic material. Some, however, very limited experience is there with the AD vector technology. It is a little bit better than mRNA technology in terms of experience because we have a product out there versus mRNA technology. We don't currently have any vaccines based on that technology. So the biggest drawback of AD vector is their natural immunity against adenovirus vector. So what it implicates is that future use or a second dose of the same vector may be less effective due to immunity against the vector. And in terms of using adenovirus vaccines in children, it could lead to very strong re reactions because these vectors origins are very similar to common upper respiratory infections. And for children to have even a cough or a cold could lead to fever, and which is a very bad reaction to a vaccine. Now, however, it is a potentially an alternative to mRNA vaccines. To learn more, here are the links for the information that I looked up for today. I also included a link for a very thorough review paper that was published in 2018, talk about some of the uh, 
behind the scenes story or past history of adenovirus vector technology. And for those of us who want to learn more on the specific topic, this is a good article to read. So I hope this video provided some basic knowledge of the new COVID-19 vaccine that has just entered phase 3 trial. And that is all for this week, and I'll see you again next Sunday for another video of COVID-19 update. Bye.